Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Virendra M. Verma, Program Leader for Agriculture Production Program and Scientist of Horticulture and Crop for the Northern Mariana College. Also, I am State Coordinator for the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education. Today, we will learn about plant propagation and nursery practices for coffee. I have divided the presentation into five sections to provide equal emphasis to all steps of plant propagation and nursery practices of coffee. Introduction, coffee plant characteristics and varieties, difference between Arabica and Robusta varieties, establishment and management of seed bed, establishment and management of coffee nursery. Coffee as a beverage is treasured by millions of people around the world. It is made from roasted seeds of plants belonging to the botanical family Rubiaceae and genus Coffea. Coffee plants were first discovered in Africa and eventually were disseminated to the countries throughout the world. Along this journey, a number of new cultivars of coffee have been created from selected varieties to fulfill the needs of plants with higher productivity, resistance to diseases, and superior crop quality. Over time, new wild varieties of coffee have also been discovered. I'm sorry, Mr. Chris, can you mute other side the microphone? Characterized as flowering shrubs, coffee plants in the tropics usually grow to a height of three to four meter. The seeds of the coffee beans are harvested from the edible red and yellow fruit, which is described as epigynous berries. Each fruit typically contains two seeds or coffee beans. However, approximately five to 10% fruits of any coffee crop may contain a pea berry, which is single, smaller, and rounder bean than a normal coffee bean. Currently, over 120 species within the genus Coffea have been catalogued. Despite this diversity, only two species are actually of great importance in the world market. Coffea arabica, known as arabica coffee, and Coffea canfora, known as robusta coffee. Given the unique chemical composition and flavor of coffee beans produced, and the diversity in the genetic origin of coffee varieties, and cultivars within these two species, it is important to distinguish between their habitat and cultivation methods. The first clear difference that has to be highlighted is the genetic one. Despite belonging to the same genus Coffea, these coffee plants are genetically different and thus comprise different species. Coffea arabica produces arabica, which has 44 chromosomes, and it produces coffee that has more than 800 aromatic components. Having only 22 chromosomes, Coffea canfora produces robusta, which has fewer aromatic components and double the amount of caffeine than arabica coffee. Arabica beans tend to have a sweeter, softer taste with tons of sugars, fruit, and berries. Their acidity is higher with that winey taste that, character, that characterize coffee with excellent acidity. Robusta, however, has a stronger, harsher taste with a grain-like overtone and peanut-like aftertaste. Its beans are generally considered to be inferior quality compared to Arabica. Some Robustas, however, are of high quality and valued especially in 
espressos for their deep flavor and good aroma. Arabica grows at higher altitudes, namely 800 to 2200 meters, with an optimal temperature range from range of 15 to 24 degrees Celsius. Robustas are easier to cultivate since they can grow at substantially lower altitudes such as 0 to 900 meters and can withstand higher temperature between 24 to 30 degrees Celsius. They are also less vulnerable to pests and weather conditions. They produce food much more quickly than the Arabicas, which need about three to five years to come to maturity and they yield more crop per tree. Constructing the seed bed Germination seed beds require fertile soil mixed with sifted and washed sand from which old stones, roots, and other foreign materials that may affect the development of the seedlings have been removed. The recommended proportions are three parts of sand and one part of soil. The use of sand provides a structure for good root growth and ensures proper root development prior to transplanting. Disinfecting the soil. It is highly recommended to disinfect the soil to prevent fungal diseases. Direct solar heat. This involves covering the soil with clear plastic sheet and leaving it in the sun for eight hours in order for the soil to reach a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. The intense heat will kill most pathogenic organisms. Once the plastic sheet is removed and the temperature of the soil has returned to the normal, it can be used for planting. Boiling water. This method consists of pouring 16 to 20 liters of boiling water per square meter of soil. The recommendation is then to loosen the soil and wait for four days is the gases produced from the decomposition of dead microorganisms evaporate. At this point, the soil is ready for planting. Application of Baldock's mixture. In this method, a chemical mixture consisting of one ounce of copper and two ounces of lime dissolved in 16 liters of water is poured on to each square meter of soil. After two to three days, the soil is ready for use. Regardless of which disinfection procedure is used while planting the seeds, the soil should be moist but not wet. The site where the seed bed is located should have enough water and be easily accessible. Side of the seed bed. The seed bed should be one meter wide, 30 centimeter high, and whatever length is desired by the producer. One meter in length is generally enough for planting one pound of seeds, which generally produces 1,000 seedlings. However, the specific number of seedlings will depend on the variety of coffee. When more than one germination seed bed is built, there should be distance of 50 centimeters between them to allow for sufficient workplace or space. Other precautions are also needed to take care of. The perimeter of the seed bed should be protected to detect the entrance of animals. The seed bed should also be protected from direct sunlight. In most cases, producers can build temporary shed shelters ranging between 70 centimeters to one meter in height, which allow for 50% shed the shelter can be built with long stemmed grasses, palm branches, banana leaves, or other easily available natural materials. Producers should avoid using coffee branches and leaves as these can be a source of disease. Planting of seeds. Prior to planting, the seed bed should be well watered and prepared Using a rake or the stick, the seed bed 
should be level and furrows of one and a half to two centimeter deep should be made, leaving five to seven centimeter space between each furrow. The seeds are then deposited into the furrows even, evenly spaced together, yet preventing them from being clumped together too. Too much. The seeds are then pressed slightly into the ground and covered with decent fat tailed soil. After planting, the seed bed should be covered with a layer of dry chopped grass, should be seedless or Spanish moss. This is done to ensure that seeds are not uncovered when watered. Seed bed management. Care should be taken each day when watering the seed bed. This should be done in the early morning hours using a watering can to distribute the water evenly. When the seeds begin to sprout, which is between 35 and 45 days after planting, the protective covering should be removed. Producers must constantly monitor the seed bed to identify problems and take corrective actions in a timely manner. If plants are affected by damping of disease or other diseases, the producer must remove and destroy the affected seedlings. As a preventive measure, an application of baldox consisting of three parts of lime and one part of copper sulfate diluted in four gallons of water should be applied to the seed bed. In addition, shade and moisture level in the seed bed should be monitored and regulated. Transplanting of the seedlings. The transplanting of the seedlings should take between 60 to 90 days after planting. This task be done with the greatest possible care. To easily remove the seedlings and not harm the roots, the seed bed should be thoroughly watered first. Only the healthiest and strongest plants with well-formed tap roots should be selected for transplanting. Where to locate the nursery? The location of the nursery should be easily accessible, close to where the coffee will be planted, with accessibility of the water where sunlight can be regulated. If there is no available natural shade, one can build temporary shade using long stem grasses, banana leaves, palm branches, or other natural materials in order to protect the nursery from excessive sun and wind. The area where nursery is established must be relatively flat to prevent deformed or damage root systems of the transpla transplanted coffee plants. Nursery design. Seedlings should be planted in polythene bags for ease of transport when traveling long distances or when access to the final plantation site is difficult. The bag seedlings should be placed in banks or groups comprising three to six rows with a space of at least three centimeters between each row. The banks must be one meter in width. The length of the banks could be determined by the number of the plants a producer intends to cultivate. To ensure quality of plants, maintain the space of at least 50 centimeters between banks. This space is necessary to assist in the management of plants in the nursery. Preparing the soil for filling bags. To prepare the soil needed for filling the poly bag, polythene bags, loosen 20 meters centi, loosen 20 centimeters of topsoil, which has not grown coffee previously and is rich in organic matter. The soil has to be loose without stones, roots, and all other foreign materials. Age is suggested step, the soil can be sifted through a sieve to ensure uniformity 
in particle size and absence of foreign materials. Then the soil should be mixed with coffee pulp, cow manure, vermicompost, bokasi, bat guano, compost, lime, or ash in order to disinfect it. These additives also assist in preventing plant loss and promote vigorous, healthy plants which are resistant to coffee rust, pests, and other diseases, but also in increasing productivity potential. Transplanting the coffee seedlings to bags to transplant coffee seedlings with four to five pairs of leaves to transplant coffee seedling with four to five pairs of leaves should be placed in 15 by 21 centimeter polythene bags. This is the size of the bag, 15 by 21 centimeter. For transplanting the seedling to polythene bags, these proportions and recommendations should be taken into consideration such as the seedling should be transplanted on cool days first thing in the morning or later in the afternoon ensuring that the soil in the bags is wet the depth of the hole must be greater than the length of the root of the seedling the coffee seedling should be planted with the root in a straight downwards direction as when it was still growing in the seed bag, firmly pressed down on the soil around the base of the plant with the planting stick to expel any air pockets around the roots. At the time of transplanting, apply 5 grams of mycorrhiza to each plant directly to the roots of the seedlings. Once the plants are transplanted, they must be watered thoroughly. While the plants are in the nursery, it is essential to water the plants every day during the dry season and is needed during the rainy season. The recommended final transplanting should be around four to five months to avoid excessive root growth in the bags, otherwise it will require their pruning. Nursery management. To help plants grow better and resist attacks by disease, it is recommended to weed for unwanted plants water regularly, apply foliar sprays made from livestock manure, honey water mixed with minerals, vermicompost and natural fertilizers strengthened with minerals such as zinc, boron, magnesium, manganese, or potassium. Producer can also apply other mineral sprays based on sulfur calcium, ash, or burdox mixture, depending on the type and incident of disease. Care must be taken to not to exceed the appropriate doses when preparing these sprays, so as to not kill young coffee plants. As the plants grow, regulating shed begins at two months from transplanting, at which point sunlight is gradually allowed to enter until completely removing all sheds. This ensures that plants develop and adapt to local conditions upon final transplanting to the field. 